stick around for the end of the video. I'm going to do a heartfelt reading of some glorious ad copy I found in this. The December 1956 copy of Mechanics Illustrated. Stand by. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to Ralph Can Fab Shop. I am James, and what did I learn in school this week? I learned that, uh, well, numbers still matter. Still. Third week in a row that uh, matters, uh, numbers matter. And uh, what I'm referencing in particular is the ability to read a chart. And the chart that I'm referring to is the settings chart on the inside of a Millermatic 220 ACDC welder. That is the um, that is the flavor of welder that we have in my weld lab, and uh, we were going to weld on. Uh, let's see, we were going to weld on five sixteenths inch plate, and uh, so we would go over to our material steel. We are welding in DCEP. Um, electrode positive setting uh, we are welding on C25 gas um, which is argon and CO2 mix uh, we are welding with solid wire now here's where it gets tricky you'll notice over here there is a division between C25 gas and C100 gas and that wire or that that thick division carries on over here now we are not welding in 120 volts we're welding on a 240 volt actually when you start the machine up it'll tell you what the voltage is and we're reading like i don't know 207 or something like that uh, so we have to stay above this line in the 240 volt section 5 sixteenths uh, this would be our uh our setting here actually we we're on three we we're on three sixteenths uh numbers matter uh, so we're at 19.5 uh, volts uh, and a wire speed of 342. That's a starting out point. Um, I ended up having to replace the tip in uh, in my gun uh, because I was having I was having problems. Made sure that my ground was okay. Made sure that my contact with my table was okay. It seems very bizarre to me that at the end of the day, you don't take a grinder and clean your table off because the surface of this is like a 16 year old kid working at mcdonald's it is just bumpy and pimply and not smooth that the i my two previous weld institutions at the end of the day that was part of the cleanup is you went in there with a flap disc and you cleaned up your table this is going to take some getting used to so uh numbers matter so that was one thing that we learned um and then we just welded. We just started doing um, uh, pad of beads. You just, if if this is your, um, let's use something dark so we don't totally screw up the exposure. Well, let's try this. Let's just say that, let's say that this picture here is a metal plate and you weld bead, bead, bead. And then when you're done with that, Pad of beads. That's all you do, uh, because a lot of welding, if you don't already know, is muscle memory, um, and getting into a position and getting into, uh, you know, a situation where it, things feel familiar, and you can your body goes, hey, we know what we're doing here, and then uh, things work out. So that was that was Monday. That was Cam 1180. Uh, Tuesday in machine shop class we. Well, we're taking slugs and turning them into little pointy things on the lathe. Getting better at it, uh, I am attempting to take advantage as much as possible of the open labs. So I go in twice a week for four hours and do extra work um, just to get used to, we call it switchology, having to, having to you know, 
you know, turn this wheel and turn that wheel and knowing what, what happens when you turn this wheel. And it's, it's just time and uh, stick time is what we would call it. Um, being, being in the environment and just getting used to moving things and getting used to not hitting that stupid freaking RPM adjuster. I'm going to make something. I don't I can't I don't know that I'm going to have time to do it. We we're actually on spring break next week. So fair warning, won't be an episode of what I learned this week at school cuz I won't be doing anything next week at school. Um but I think a project I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make something so that some sort of a stop or something so that when I adjust the speed on that knob, something is going to hold that knob there. So I can't, you know, give it a good hard stare and it change speeds on me because things feed differently at 1200 RPM instead of the 360 you're supposed to be feeding it at. So something else that I learned um, is, well, one of the things that I do is I take a picture of my lathe at the end of my shift. And so that way, if there's any doubt or if somebody's making a ruckus because things have not been cleaned up, I can go, it ain't me. Talk to the other guy. CYA. Why I have to do this, you know, as someone who's half a hundred years old, I don't get it. But anyways, so that's something I do. Something else I learned is if your collet is in way tight, and even though you have strength like Samson, you can't get that thing undone. Something that I learned is that you attach a C-clamp to your wheel, trying not to tear up the nice rubbery grip on the outside of that that um, uh, that collet uh, knob wheel thing. Uh, tighten that C-clamp in there and you whack it with a hammer really hard. And you do that a number of times and it'll finally loosen up. So. When I put those in there, I'm just still trying to figure out how tight is too tight. Kind of got that one figured out. Um, but then, you know, you don't want it, you don't want it loose and crap goes flying all over the place. So anyway, uh, Wednesday, CNC class, lots of this. Here's your drawing. This is what I want your thing to do and make it happen. And then we run it through the simulator. I've showed you a picture of the simulator before. And then uh, and then it does weird stuff. And then you have to try to figure out the weird stuff and make it not do weird stuff. And it is a, it's just learning another language. That's that's really all it is. And you, you learn it by immersion. And I feel like I'm immersed up to about right here. Um, because you'll... It's almost like when I was in surgery, we, we kind of joked about the see one, do one, teach one approach of how to do a, a surgery when we would scrub in. Um, but this is very similar to that where, hey, let's talk about how to do this. Okay, all right, now write a program for it. Okay, now debug the program. Okay, run it on the simulator. Okay, all right, done. Next, dink, I mean, just boom, 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 like that. We'll get it, not a big deal. And then today, metrology, I uh, took, a, took a midterm exam, 14 pages. We'll see. We'll see how I did. Uh, end of the day, um, Mrs. Rattlecan and I um, went and we did two things. One of the things that we did was we went uh, kind of, I don't want to call it antiquing because it's not really antiquing. Um, but we we go to a place that has this place called here in Dayton called Antiques Village, and it's like I don't know eighty thousand square feet of booths that sell any and everything you could ever think of. Uh, some stuff is really cool. Some stuff, bleh. chalk paint, okay, uh, handmade crochet doilies, okay. Every once in a while, you'll come. There's four or five booze that I go to religiously because they always they always bring me the good stuff. And uh, the good stuff that I found today was I found an 18-inch Starrett 
R4 ruler with a not Starrett square head on it. Um, and that's okay because I've been I've been looking for an 18 inch Starrett ruler. Uh, I was also able to find a brown and sharp uh, number 61 1 to 2 inch micrometer. And uh, I'm learning a couple of things about micrometers. Number one, I like micrometers that have the little clicky ratchet thimble on them. Um, but I, I'm also discovering that I don't like the size of all micrometers because I have to be able to hold it with my pinky finger as is suggested and at the same time be able to reach it with my little stumpy hot dog thumb and finger to twist the ratchety thing so I have to so I've, I've learned that that's something I need to look for now I, I'm also kind of on the hunt for some uh, some of these uh, you know a one to two uh, zero to one, a one to two, maybe a two to three, um, that have verniers on them. Uh, so that's something else that I'm looking for. But anyways, they had a couple of these, and, and you know, we'll make an episode on, you know, going, taking those through the degreaser, taking those through the evaporust treatment, and trying to clean those off, and, and putting those into, uh, you know, into um, into the shop, you know, into functioning tools, because that's that's why I go to you know these places because i'm looking for tools to use i'm not looking for stuff to hang on my wall i'm not looking for stuff to you know decorate with uh, i'm looking for stuff to work with uh and then afterwards we went to um a special exhibit at uh the museum of the u.s air force which is here in, in dayton ohio and if you are even tangentially interested in airplanes you should take a day or two and come up and see the four hangers of stuff that they have here but we went there because uh, they have an exhibit about life-size models built of things that were found in Leonardo da Vinci's sketchbook if you've ever seen the sketch of the 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 pyramidal looking tank they had a one-to-one -one representation of that of his flapping wing of um screws you know his version of, a, of an archimedes screws and worm gears and chain drives and i mean just all this stuff that that you look at it today and it is basic mechanics but this is in you know, like 1440 to 1450 or something like that. Um, and that was pretty darn cool uh, to, to be able to see something like that and then look in the background and see like the XP-70 Valkyrie, which has mechanical features that you are now looking in front of you that, you know, were sketched out in a book, you know, 600 years ago or whatever math says that number is. Uh, and then uh, and then the welder in me is always looking for stuff to talk about. Um, and we were here, and there is a uh, Women in the Air Force exhibit in uh, one of the hangars. It's right there by the Blackbird. Uh, if you go into, I believe it's Hangar 3, right as you come in, it's over on your left-hand side. And uh, they had these silhouettes that were cut out of half inch steel I, I gotta they gotta be laser cut because um, I just I don't know that you're gonna get that clean of a cut with a plasma cutter uh, you know could be wrong you know I, it's still early in the year uh, you know I, I still got still got plenty of opportunity to to misstate something but that's at least that's the way it looked to me and then there were some you know the welds were perfectly acceptable. They're, they weren't like they weren't like handrails at, at an amusement park. If you ever want to lose your faith in things, start looking at welds when you're out. Anyways, that's what we did this week. Like I said, we're on spring break next week, so there's not going to be one of these next week.
there is an ad and I want to read this copy to you just because I thought it was very telling of the world of 1956 and kind of think about it today. When the other kids ask, what does your dad do? How does your boy answer them? Sure, you're his hero, you know that, but sometimes it can get kind of tough if the other kids don't seem to understand about the old man. It's not that you like to be chained to the same old job. Maybe you just had to leave school too soon. Maybe the war interfered. Anyway, here you are, stuck, because you just don't have enough formal training. Well, mister, you can still make the grade. It isn't easy. you got to have grit and determination and the will to succeed. As long as you have these, ICS can put you on the road to real prestige, advancement, and security. Your family can really be proud of you. Spare time ICS study pays off! Exclamation point. ICS gives you practical dollars and cents training the kind that pays off. You choose from 256 courses and you get personalized, sympathetic guidance. You advance as rapidly as your time and ability permit. Does it work? Thomas Dyke was a coal miner with no high school education. He studied with ICS, worked his way up to licensed engineer. Today his income is above the average for college trained engineers and this kind of training can work for you. Book number one, how to succeed a gold mine of helpful job tips. Book number two, an outline of job opportunities in the field that interests you most. And book number three, a sample ICS math lesson. Text that shows you the ICS clear step-by-step -step teaching method. Send the coupon today. No obligation. I I dig pop culture. Uh, you know, the, just the, the things that were popular in uh, the different periods of, uh, you know, of, of our existence. Not just as a country, but as humans in general. And that's kind of a time capsule. And I will, I will get at least $3 of entertainment out of that. Sitting in my chair, probably a cat in my lap or on my shoulder. Um, reading about the, uh, the 300 mile an hour atom powered train that I will probably never get to ride on. Even though they've been talking about it since at least December of 1956. I enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that. If I find, I've got some other stuff that I'll find. You know, I might, might even pull out this one for a future episode. I found this in a store one day. Map reading for the soldier. And this one has a copyright date of February 1944. What was America and most of the world doing in 1944? Might be an interesting read. Anyways, that's what I did this week in school with a little bonus content on there. Um, if you were entertained, if you think I did my job, if you think you learned something, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, then give us a thumbs down. Um, uh, if you have uh, comments, uh, put them in the comment section down beneath the sermon notes. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, if you're so inclined, make sure to click the little bell so the next time I do one of these little yappity yaps, uh, you will get... A notification and then you can watch it and go wow he's just not that smart uh, anyways you guys have a great weekend i will see you in dose weeks if i can do it you can do it cheers thanks for taking the time out of your day to spend it here with me hope you enjoyed this video here's one that you might enjoy as well if you're not already subscribed be sure to hit that button hit the bell next to it so that you get a notification when we drop a new video. If you've got comments, put them down beneath the sermon notes. And remember, if I can do it, you can do it. You guys have a great weekend. Cheers.